We saw that pre-Easter slumber present itself in the markets last week, but where we have uh, had the NSE rally 3.5% since its uh, 3,870 point closing low on March the 29th, wrapping up yet another month this week. What is your outlook for the market? Well, I, I think, you know, the market was very defensive in the first half. We were the poorest performing market in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, uh, it was pretty tough going. It was pretty, it was a relentless sell-off actually uh, into that low you just mentioned. I think it looked, feels a bit steadier, lots of good demand from foreign investors. It's priced attractively on a price earnings ratio, but there's a lot of beta around uh, the forward economic forecast. The weather has been uh, uh, relatively uncertain. Our rains haven't been good. I'm very bullish on the oil price. That's a big problem for our economy. We import all our, all our oil. And I think when you take everything in the mix, it looks fairly priced to me with a little bit of upside potential uh, and then maybe more if we get some good rains uh, which bring down the food prices. As I touched on earlier, Ali Khan, quite uh, interesting mm. the kind of movement or activity we've been seeing on carb acid uh, shares of yes. late. What's playing out there? Because that's a counter we don't often talk about. It, it's highly, un, it's, it, it's very thinly traded typically. It doesn't really feature in the volume uh, gainers at, at any time, so you're quite correct. I think there's been a, 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 a liquidation of a very big, big shareholding. Um, I'm still not sure uh, who's the seller and who's the buyer. But, you know, the main player in this carb, carb acid uh, BOC gases uh, business is Centum. Um, mm -hmm. They are, of course, listed on, on the market and they're predominantly a private equity firm, but they do have a lot of uh, uh, listed shareholding. Shareholdings. Uh, taking a look at that counter, if you were able to get your hand on stock, would you? Mm. Uh, you know, what kind of investment merit are we looking on a counter like that? Well, I, I think you know, Centum have proven that they they have the ability now to engineer um, better value for shareholders. They've done that with their own share price. They've been doing that in a number of other situations. However, for me, you know, I, I think there is good demand for the gas business. The Car Carbacid has a solid business. But at a P of 14 and a half, um, I'm not reaching out for it because, yeah. you know, there's some very cheap stocks at the Nairobi Stock Exchange yeah, trading on P's of eight with strong strong growth profiles, I think. Well, talking about strong growth po profiles, it seems mm -hmm. that Scan Group is boasting quite a bit yeah. of appeal. That share price has rallied 12.6% uh, over three sessions post its earnings mm -hmm. release. There's also a lot of investor confidence around its expansion plans. This a company, if I remember uh, correctly, you've been pretty positive about as well, Ali Khan. Uh, yes, absolutely. I, I mean, it has had a huge rally. It's up about 105% over 12 months. Uh, it's a little bit below its all-time high of 76, which was struck last year. Um, it's a really, a, it's a classic copy of WPP. Uh, Scan Group is a con it, it has a lock on the media and advertising business in our region. Uh, I think they have about 62, 63% market share. Um, they're riding a, a rising tide in terms of advertising spend. International brands are looking to get a bit of real estate uh, spending. Scan Group is very well positioned as exemplified by the Airtel account win for Sub-Saharan Africa. I'm bullish. They've executed well. I, I would buy this on dips and I think what Bharat has achieved in East Africa he now, he now will look to achieve in sub-Saharan Africa. And, you know, he does deliver on his business plan. And I, for one, think it's a good, good stock to be holding over the, over the three-year three -year view. Bear in mind that it's, there's very little liquidity, notwithstanding yeah. the fact that the lockup uh, expires sometime this year. There are very few shares. It's a sexy sector in sub-Saharan Africa. Bharat is the, is the way to play it, I think. How are you classifying it? Are you looking at it more as a growth stock, a value stock, or a little bit of both? I look at it as a growth stock. I think, you know, it, uh, the, the total advertising spend in sub-Saharan Africa is in a sweet spot. I think it's going to continue showing uh, above-trend growth. And I think Bharat Thakra is, is, is yeah. currently the best positioned uh, in that space. Well, let's talk about uh, a stock that created uh, quite a bit of a wave on Thursday, CFC Insurance Holdings. It rose 127% yes. on its <laughs> debut. Uh, are you yes. 
positive about this company moving forward because we do know that it's got that insurance element and investment element invested and uh, ahead of this listing we had CFC Stanbeck saying this is now an opportunity for shareholders to get what they really want when it comes to the CFC business. Absolutely. I think, you know, look, it was a thin market on Thursday, but I'm sure a few people thought these were the good old days, like 206, 207 in the days of the very bullish market. Essentially, this was an introduction by listing. I think the pricing was on the conservative side. However, I think the, the core business is strong. I, the insurance business uh, regionally is, is growing. I think the big elephants in the room, of which CFC insurance is one, are going to take a bigger and bigger piece of this expanding cake. And I, I, you know, it's a well-run, well-organized business. I, for one, you know, am I going to chase it right now? I just want to see a bit more liquidity on the market before I look to take a position. Looking to wait for liquidity there, but once that does surface, I mean, just taking a look at the plays that we're looking at here, we've got the banking arm on the one hand and then the insurance mm. or investment arm on the other. What kind of exposure would you be heading for uh, in this kind of economic cycle that Kenya is in at this stage? I, I like the bank. I think, you know, I've noticed I work on the same floor. I've noticed an incredible uh, uh, increase in the human capital that's been put into Nairobi by the organization. I think they've got a wonderful emerging market footprint. I think they've got lots of real estate here in Kenya, which is which they're going to make work harder. The, 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 the broking business, mm -hmm. um, the, the banking, bank lending business, all I, I expect that business to actually perform very well. On a PE now of about 12, it looks very attractive. The insurance business, I, you know, I think for shareholders, the listing was a way of unlocking value. Uh, the, the, the management didn't feel that the insurance business was being valued correctly. And I think what, you know, their point is being proven as we speak. So yeah. I, I like both sides. I wouldn't be looking to offload the insurance side or the banking side. I would be a buyer on dips here as well. Let's just hone in on that banking sector because I've picked up a headline mm. on the business daily this morning mm. saying that experts predict a decline in bank share prices. This had already been on the cards, right, Ali Khan? No one really expecting the kind of profits we've been seeing over the recent past or last year's record growth filtering through yet again this year, right? Well, so far, the only person I've heard uh, make that call, say that they were going to repeat 2010, was Dr. Mwangi. He was quoted in an interview two or three weeks ago in Reuters. But I think essentially you're correct. Uh, you know, 2010 was a spectacular year for the banks. They had a one-way bet in the bond market. Um, if you, and th th those profits are not going to be repeated this year. It's just not going to happen. The bond market is a lot more tricky now. And really, if you're going to be very long, you could end up being very wrong. But uh, so as, as you're saying, I don't think we're going to see that spectacular growth, but we're going to see good organic growth. And post the 2010 results, we're looking at some very uh, cheap yeah. banking stocks. So I can't see a big profit taking bout uh, in the banks. The P's are between 8 and 12. They don't look that demanding. Well, uh, results that have filtered through out of Crown Berger, it posted 169 yes. million shilling a profit on Friday, increasing 29.6%. Very quickly, your overview of a Crown Berger at this stage? Well, they're in a good spot as well. The construction side, the building side is going at a terrific clip. Uh, real estate is the one asset everyone's keen on. So I think, you know, they're riding a good way. They've expanded regionally. Um, it's a thinly traded stock. Uh, I, I, I look at it, I keep an eye on it, but I would, I'm not chasing it at this point in time.